This course has a... This course should take about 20 minutes to complete. To complete this course, you must view all the content and pass the knowledge challenge quiz. You may pause your training at any time by clicking exit. Be sure to click exit when leaving the course or your progress will not be recorded properly. Click resources anytime to access the course workbook and other course materials. Click help to learn more about how to use this course. Let's get started. As you learned in recognizing sexual harassment, harassment can take many forms, including visual, verbal, physical, and psychological harassment. Leering, sexual gestures, suggestive images, derogatory comments, jokes, propositions for sexual favors, touching, blocking someone's movement, stalking, and public humiliation are all types of harassment. Harassment is illegal when it is based on a protected class and the harassment is a condition of employment. It interferes with an individual's work performance, or it is severe and pervasive. If you are facing or witnessing harassing behavior at work, do not wait to address it. Rather than worry over whether harassment qualifies as illegal, the question you should ask is, is this behavior unwelcome? Unwelcome behavior is conduct that is considered offensive, undesirable, or objectionable by the person experiencing it. Sometimes it is difficult to know if someone finds behavior unwelcome. Consider this scenario. Luis tells a joke to his co-worker, Imogene. Imogene smiles slightly as Luis tells his joke. When he reaches the punchline, she gives a quiet ha-ha before saying that she needs to get back to work and quickly returns to her desk. Did Imogene find Luis's conduct unwelcome? She smiled and laughed, so she must have been... It can be very hard to speak up when you experience unwelcome behavior. You might not know what to say, or you might be embarrassed or afraid of negative consequences. These are some of the reasons training is important. It provides strategies for responding to and reporting unwelcome behavior and helps us build a workplace culture in which people feel comfortable voicing concerns. What should you do if you are experiencing unwelcome behavior? First, ask yourself if you think the situation could be resolved with a conversation. If the answer is no, or if you do not feel safe talking to the person who is harassing you, talk to your supervisor or someone in the human resources department. If your supervisor is the harasser, talk to someone in the human resources department or your supervisor's manager. If you do feel comfortable talking to the person, let him or her know that their behavior is not acceptable and you would like it to stop. This may sound obvious, but sometimes simply telling someone their behavior is unwelcome can make them stop. They may not have realized their behavior was unacceptable or unwelcome. This does not at all excuse the behavior, but if the person knows it bothers you, he or she may stop. If you aren't sure what to say, here are some ideas. I'm not cool with what you are doing. I'm asking you to stop and not do it again. I really hate it when you call me that. I'm asking you to never say that again. That language really offends me. Can you stop using it, please? The pictures you sent in that email are demeaning. Can you not do that again? I know you weren't directing your comments at me, but they made me uncomfortable. Please don't make comments like that again. The important thing is to be clear that you don't like the behavior and that you are asking the person to stop. If you continue to experience unwelcome, harassing behavior, document it as soon as possible. It is helpful if you write down what is happening to you and include direct quotes, dates, patterns of harassment, and the names of witnesses. Save any letters, cards, or emails sent to you. Keep things in a secure place, preferably at home. Documentation will help if an investigation is necessary.
If you are not comfortable having a conversation with the person whose behavior is unacceptable, or if you have a conversation and the behavior does not stop immediately, you should report it. It is important to report all concerns of sexual harassment or inappropriate sexual conduct to your supervisor or human resources contact as soon as possible. Management must be made aware of the situation so that it can conduct an immediate and impartial investigation and take appropriate action to remediate and prevent the prohibited conduct from continuing. You may feel reluctant to report harassment. You may worry about what your coworkers or employer will think of you or that you're overreacting. This is understandable. Thinking about reporting harassment makes people nervous and is one of the main reasons people choose not to come forward. But if harassment is happening and it is not reported, the culture within your organization cannot improve. As difficult as it may be, making your supervisor, human resources, or someone in a position of authority in your company aware of harassment is the first step towards ending it. You should report any inappropriate or unwelcome behavior you experience, witness, or become aware of without worrying about whether or not it is unlawful harassment. If you report harassment to a manager or supervisor and receive an inadequate response such as being told to just ignore it, you should document the response and take your complaint to the next level. Your first step should be to report what you have experienced to the contact identified in your company's sexual harassment policy. If you are not comfortable reporting to that person, contact someone in a position of authority or someone in your human resources department. Once the allegation of potential sexual harassment is raised, all persons who have knowledge of the issue are on notice and the employer is responsible for ensuring that a proper investigation is undertaken. If you submit a complaint, you can expect the following to occur in accordance with your company's policies and procedures. The designated person will conduct an immediate review of the allegations and take any interim actions as appropriate. Relevant documents, emails, or phone records may be requested, preserved, and obtained. Interviews may be conducted with involved parties and witnesses. The investigation will be documented, as outlined in your company's policy, and you and the individual accused of sexual harassment should be notified of the outcome and what appropriate administrative action will be or has been taken. Confidentiality can be important to people dealing with harassment issues. However, it is impossible for companies to promise absolute confidentiality. In the event of an investigation, several people, including possible witnesses and human resources representatives, would need to be involved. However, your employer should make an effort to be as discreet as possible during and after the investigation. In addition to the process outlined in your company's anti-harassment policy, you may also choose to pursue outside legal remedies. If you believe that you have experienced illegal workplace harassment, you can file a charge of discrimination with the Equal Opportunity Employment Commission, or EEOC. A charge of discrimination is a signed statement asserting that an employer engaged in employment discrimination, which includes harassment, and requesting that the EEOC investigate. If you plan to file a lawsuit alleging harassment, you first have to file a charge with the EEOC. In general, you must file a charge within 180 calendar days from the most recent instance of discrimination or harassment. The deadline is extended to 300 calendar days if a state or local agency enforces a state or local law that prohibits employment discrimination on the same basis. If you are unsure of how long you have to file a charge, contact the EEOC or an EEOC field office for help. Click the link for EEOC contact information and to find the EEOC field office closest to you. You can file a charge of discrimination using the EEOC's online public portal. 
in person at any one of the EEOC's field offices or at any state or local Fair Employment Practice Agencies, FEPAs, or by mail. Click the links for more information. Under Title VII, remedies may be awarded to a victim of illegal discrimination, which includes harassment, to put him or her in the same or nearly the same position that he or she would have been if the discrimination had never occurred. For example, if someone is not selected for a job or a promotion because of discrimination, the remedy may include placement in the job and or back pay and benefits the person would have received. An employer may also be required to stop any discriminatory practices and take steps to prevent discrimination in the future. A victim of discrimination also may be able to recover attorney's fees, expert witness fees, and court costs. Compensatory damages may be awarded to pay victims for out-of-pocket expenses caused by discrimination, such as costs associated with a job search or medical expenses and compensate them for any emotional harm suffered, such as mental anguish, inconvenience, or loss of enjoyment of life. Punitive damages may be awarded to punish an employer who has committed an especially malicious or reckless act of discrimination. Under Title VII, there is a cap on the total combined amount of compensatory and punitive damages that can be awarded. The size of the cap depends on the size of the employer ranging from $50,000 on the small side to $300,000 on the large side. Harassment may constitute a crime if it involves actions such as physical touching, coerced physical confinement, or coerced sex acts. If you experience sexual harassment that rises to the level of violence or assault, you should contact law enforcement. Many states and local jurisdictions have their own anti-discrimination laws and agencies responsible for enforcing those laws, which are known as Fair Employment Practices Agencies, or FIPAs. Use the link below to find the FIPA closest to you and find out more about your state and local laws and filing requirements. Even with options to report within their company and to state and federal agencies, Victims of harassment may hesitate to speak up or take action. They may fear for their safety, be afraid they will be humiliated or ostracized, lose their job, or suffer damage to their career or reputation. In the next section, you'll learn about anti-retaliation laws, which help ensure that people are not discouraged from speaking out against workplace harassment or participating in the EEOC's administrative process or other employment discrimination proceedings. It's human nature. Sometimes we want to lash out or get back at people who have accused us or someone we like of doing something wrong. At its very basic level, this describes retaliation. In the work environment, retaliation can happen if a supervisor punishes an employee for rejecting advances, reporting harassment, or participating in some way in a harassment inquiry or investigation. This type of retaliatory behavior is not only wrong, it is also illegal. Retaliation can take many forms. Click each item for some examples. Blocking an employee's advancement by giving an unfair performance review, providing negative recommendations, or selecting a less qualified candidate for a promotion could be retaliation. In the work environment, retaliation can happen if a supervisor punishes an employee for rejecting advances, reporting harassment, 
or participating in some way in a harassment inquiry or investigation. This type of retaliatory behavior is not only wrong, it is also illegal. Retaliation can take many forms. Click each item for some examples. Reassigning an employee to a role that is below his or her capabilities. Putting unreasonable time constraints on projects. Withholding resources needed to get the job done. Or purposefully assigning an unfavorable work schedule could be retaliation. Badmouthing, micromanaging, intimidating, or attempting to intimidate with verbal, written, or physical threats, subjecting an employee to nasty emails, or berating an employee in meetings could be retaliation. Excluding an employee from an important meeting or training that could enhance performance or career opportunities creating a sense of isolation, or relocating an employee to an area where they have little contact with co-workers could be retaliation. In the work environment, retaliation can happen if a supervisor punishes an employee for rejecting advances, reporting harassment, or participating in some way in a harassment inquiry or investigation. This type of retaliatory behavior is not only wrong, it is also illegal. Retaliation can take many forms. Click each item for some examples.